Good morning everyone, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today I will be starting the process of turning these cage-raised, pellet-fed Angora rabbits into naturally fed meat rabbit colony breeders. But first, a bit of background about these rabbits. These three girls were born to Sylvan and Sequoia, our two main Angora breeders, in April of this year, right before our rabbitry's pasturella epidemic began. As a result of that illness, these three does and their papa Sylvan are the only Angoras I have left. Their mother Sequoia and the rest of their siblings were among those rabbits who had to be culled because they got sick. Though the pasturella issue is now past, and the dust baths we provide for all our rabbits do a great job of keeping their fur mites in check, I still don't feel totally comfortable selling any of my Angoras, which was my original plan for all three of these does. The dust baths haven't entirely gotten rid of the fur mites, they just get them mostly gone. So even though I don't want or need four Angora rabbits for fiber, I've decided to keep them all. As a result of this decision, I have decided to change their names, since the names I put on their pedigrees when I thought I would sell them aren't my favorite. Britta is now Letelia, or Tia for short. Balefire is now Cambria, or Brie for short. And Briar is now Jolti, which is a mix between the words yellow and golden in Russian. So the two Angoras I am keeping in cages as fiber rabbits are Sylvan and Jolti, a play on silver and gold. And Tia and Brie will be added to my meat rabbit colony and be regular meat breeders. Even though their long fiber will need to be regularly shaved when they are living on the ground, which means a little extra work for me, I am really excited to add these two to my colony. Not only did both of them get through the entire pasturella affair without showing any symptoms at all, their mama Sequoia was also a stellar mother, being able to perfectly care for and feed the huge litters she had. In adding her daughters to my meat herd, I hope to capture both their hardiness and their possible maternal instincts. So now that I have explained what is going to happen to these rabbits and why, now all I have left to do is to start preparing them for their transition. I would cause a lot of problems for myself if I took these cage-raised, pellet-fed rabbits and stuck them in my naturally-fed colony. So over the next few days, I am going to slowly switch their diet over from mostly pellets and the occasional handful of greens that they are used to getting to the only fresh greens and hay diet the colony is now getting. Because these rabbits are already used to getting greens, I didn't have to start quite as slowly as I would if they were just getting only pellets. So my first handful of greens I got for them the first day was pretty big, and boy did they enjoy eating it. That night they did not get anything special, just pellets as regular, and the next morning they got another handful of greens, and this time it was a little bit bigger than the one they had had yesterday. And since I was going to all this trouble to get extra greens for the girls, I figured that Sylvan should get to enjoy some of the greens as well. He is used to eating those, so he enjoyed getting his little treats as well. Since giving them just greens wasn't that big of a change from their normal diet, I decided to do that second day a little bit of hay as well. Hay is just dried greens, but the dryness of it is different than fresh greens, so I gave them a little bit as even a greater kind of change from their regular diet, and they really enjoyed eating that as well. These rabbits have never tasted hay before in their entire lives. They've just had pellets and greens so far. Do you like this hay? Yeah, it's alfalfa, it's good for you. And this time, Sylvan isn't getting any of what the girls get. I'm not gonna feed him hay. It's gonna get stuck all in his fiber, and that's why I don't really feed it to my angoras because I tried in the past for a while and they didn't even seem to like it that much. It ended up getting wet or spilled and never eaten and it got all stuck in their fiber all the time. So fresh greens he will get when the girls get them but hay is just going to stay with the girls because they're going to be meat rabbits and they need to get used to eating that. And Lucky Briar she's going to be staying in a cage being a wool rabbit. But she gets to try all the yummy hay and greens too that the other two are getting. Aren't you so lucky? 
it's just easier to do them all in the same area and feed them all the same thing than separate one and then have the other two because that means less chores and less stress on the rabbits. So far with this, I've been doing it either hay or greens once a day or maybe every other day, but now I've upped it to twice a day. So they got some greens last night and they're getting more again tonight. So we're gonna do either greens or hay twice a day now. Their poops are looking normal. They're not acting any different. So I think they're doing well on it so far. So we're upping it and this means we're one step closer to getting them to where they're eventually gonna live. It has been a while and the Angoras are very used to eating lots of hay and lots of greens and now it is time to transition them out of the cage and we're not going to put them directly in the colony. There are many reasons for that. The main reason is we are waiting in a break of babies. We have just started our breeding season and the meat rabbits are having a steady stream of babies and last time I put new does in a colony all the litters the moms were taking care of were really bad. The moms stopped nursing them because of the stress of having new rabbits in the colony. So I'm hoping to wait until we don't have very many litters or no litters at all so that whenever we do transition those into a colony, then we don't have to deal with the litters getting harmed because the moms are stressed out from that. I would much rather wait a little bit longer and have successful litters who do okay then sacrifice the well-being of several litters to put them in a little bit sooner. But they are ready now to transition out of the cage, so in the meantime, while they're waiting to go in the colony, I'm going to put them in the tractor with Ivanhoe, so they'll be eating grass through the tractor, and as it starts to get colder and the grass starts to die back, I will be able to feed them hay in the tractor as well. Then they will also get a chance to be bred by Ivanhoe, and my hope is to have a lull in the babies in the colony before these two Angora does give birth. So they'll have their first litters in the colony and then everything will go smoothly from there. So that is my hope and we'll see how that works out. But for now I'm going to put them in the tractor with Ivanhoe so Jolti can go back to eating pellets. I will slowly transition her off of hay and greens and then everything will be one step closer. When I first put the does in the tractor, Ivanhoe began trying to breed them, which is completely expected, and he was chasing them around for a while. But as you can see, he's not being aggressive or unkind, he's not hurting them or biting them, he's just chasing them, and it's a very polite chasing. I am very pleased with his manners and how well he's behaving. It's later and it looks like there's a thorough coating of dust from the dust bath everywhere. It's in their water and the grass underneath the tractor looks kind of dusty. Very strange and I think kind of funny. Not sure if that's from the rabbits digging it out or from them getting all dusty and then running around. But things have calmed down quite a bit. Looks like they're acting pretty normally. I'm really surprised and very glad that Ivanhoe is being so gentle and after trying to breed for a tiny bit that he's back to his normal nice kind self. So things are going pretty well and I'll come check back on them later. It's night time now and it's sprinkling. Ivanhoe is out in the rain. Looks like, it's hard for you guys to see but I can see a little better. Looks like both Angora does are a little wet as well. So we'll see how that works. Their hair is different than regular rabbit's hair, but it shouldn't get matted because it's so short. But we'll have to see. So far, it looks like they're both doing okay, and Ivanhoe is doing okay as well. So I feel confident leaving them for the night and checking back tomorrow morning. It's the next morning, and everything seems to be going okay. And then, of course, right after I say that, they have to have a little tussle and a little scuffle. But, you know, that's just rabbits for you. They always try to prove you wrong. And then everything calmed down pretty quickly, and they went back to eating grass. It has now been a while. As you can see, the grass is starting to die back a little bit, and I've needed to put some hay in there with them, and they're doing well with that as well. Everyone's poops are being normal. They are transitioning from their pellet diet to this new diet very, very well. I'm very impressed with that. 
and Ivanhoe was still being quite the gentleman with them. I never actually saw a successful fall off any time they were with Ivanhoe, but it's very possible that they were bred and I just wasn't there. So I am assuming that they are pregnant from the day I put them in with him. And we are going through yet another transition, but not into the colony proper, at least, but we're getting one more step closer. I am building a little pen right next to the colony, and I'm going to put them in there, since everything in the tractor is dying back, there's not really a point in having the tractor out anymore. So instead of feeding them hay in the tractor, it'll be easier for me to feed them hay in a static pen. So after I finish building the pen, I am going to move them into it. Right beside the main meat rabbit colony, I have built a little, what I'm calling our colony pen. I have finished putting the bedding in the pen, as well as a hidey house and water and hay. I am going to now put the rabbits in. Ivanhoe will go in first, then one at a time. I will shave, then put in both Angora does. Then all three of them will be in their new home. So Ivanhoe is now in the place. I was carrying him over in this five gallon bucket. I was just coming in to put him in and he jumped out all by himself. So he's in here now. I'm gonna close the door and observe him for a little bit, watching the east his new house. Not only will this be an adjustment for the current rabbits who are being moved in this new place, it's also gonna be an interesting time for the big colony rabbits, especially Ronwyn. He has not had to deal with an adult buck since he was put in the colony. So this is their first time meeting face to face and we'll have to see how this goes. The chicken wire is small enough that they won't be able to fight through the wire and give each other a whole bunch of wounds. But I wouldn't be so surprised if there was a whole bunch of spraying pee as well as a whole bunch of interest. And it looks like so far these three are very interested in what Ivanhoe's doing. Okay, all three rabbits are now in here. The shaving job I did on the Angoras is pretty rough. I tried to leave some for longer so that they stayed warmer. They have a hidey house, but having such short fur does make it a little colder for them. But I didn't do a really good job. So some parts are really long, some parts are medium, some parts are super short. They look kind of nasty, but I figured it'd be better to leave some of the parts longer than usual than to shave them all off and make them look better but make them be a little bit colder. All three of them seem to be enjoying exploring their new area. They've been in the hide house several times. No one has tipped over the water yet, and people have been checking out the hay. The rabbits on the other side of the colony fence are also very interested in these newcomers. So we'll see how that all plays out, especially the two bucks are very interested in each other, and some of the does are as well. I'm pretty sure that the Heidi house is positioned well enough that no one could jump out. Though it's possible if someone jumped on there, it maybe they could jump across to up here because this is just easy mesh to get through if they were able to jump up to the pallet thing and then squeeze under the mesh. It's possible, but I don't really know if that's going to happen. We'll have to see. That is a risk, but I figured this would be the best place to put it. I didn't really have anything better. There weren't many options of where to place a Heidi house in this very narrow setup. It's actually really fun to see them exploring and enjoying being in a colony. This is the Angora Doe's first time, and I think even Ivanhoe's first time on like deep bedding, or any bedding. I guess it's not super deep yet. But let's see, I think Ivanhoe has just been in a cage when he's little, and then in a tractor 
and or past Japan for most of his life. And both Angoras have been in cages most of their lives and then a little bit in a tractor. So this is their first time on a dirt floor with bedding instead of grass. So they seem to be liking it so far. When I first put Cambria in with Ivanhoe, there was a bit of breathing action going on. It didn't look like she lifted for him. There weren't any fall-offs, but he was trying to breed her. But when I put Tia in, Ivanhoe didn't try to breed her at all. So, and there's been no more breeding or attempts to breed for either does. So, everything seems to be settling down nicely. Well, since they're doing good, I might just close everything up and come check back later. It's nighttime chores. And looks like everything is good except for the water that they tipped over. Excuse me, Cambria. You messy bunnies. I guess I should expect it for your first time being in here. There you go. But they are still enjoying their hidey house. And their hay basket is still mostly full. And now they have nice clean water as well. What good bunnies, what good bunnies. Well, that was pretty easy chores. Good night, bunnies. See you later. Oh, I guess it's this one, isn't it? I'm still getting used to this whole thing. You guys are doing so well, though. I'm glad you're adjusting so good. It is a few days later, and everyone's doing great. Their food and water are working well, and they're getting used to being over this area. But one thing that is kind of interesting and a little bit worrying is that I don't know if you can see, but right by Ivanhoe, they've started to dig a burrow. The wire doesn't reach all the way to over here. I thought it was a small enough gap, but they were able to push it aside a little bit and start digging. Thankfully, it's just like in the perfect spot to where it's very, very unlikely they'll be able to dig out. And the soil here is very, very hard. They've only made a small impression. It's not really like a huge burrow. So for now, I'm going to let it go and just see what happens. If it gets too long, then I'll probably fill it in. But it's very possible the ground here is too hard and they'll give up. And so why not let them have the experience of digging for themselves. And if it gets too bad, I'll fix it later. All three of the rabbits are still doing very well in the pen. Everyone is getting along fine. They have transitioned onto their new diet very well. I think this is a good place to end the video. Make sure to check out part two, that should be coming out shortly, about finally putting them in the colony. Pretty soon a lull in the babies is going to happen and I'll be able to finally put them in. Thanks for watching!